Hello there. In this video extract from our reflection workshop, Naomi discusses, with the use of examples, how you can use a three-stage process to reflect on your experiences effectively. If you find this helpful, we have more useful workshop extracts on our YouTube channel, Derby Uni Library, as well as other audio and video content. I'm going to talk now about the three stages of reflection. So, personal reflection, or indeed all reflection, can be said to have three stages. A descriptive stage, a critical thinking stage, and a, fu a future focus stage. And what we've just done with that activity is a very simple, straightforward reflection. We've done it. So you can all pat yourselves on the back. 20 minutes into the workshop, you have reflected. You've done a reflection. Um, and those three questions I just asked fit in with these different stages. So first, we asked, what does the picture look like? Descriptive stage. Um, so that could be the kind of things that you guys um, came through with um, in the chat. But also, it could be a, a basic description. This is a picture of a boat. It has two suns. There is a balloon. There are many fish in the sea, um, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. We then got a critical thinking stage. So that's when we thought about what went well, what could have gone better. Um, so we're when we say critical in this context, and this goes for when we, whenever we talk about critical thinking in terms of study, it doesn't mean being negative. It doesn't mean criticizing. Critical thinking is just taking a step beyond. It's not taking things at face value. It's doing that extra step in thinking about it. So here we've thought about the positives and the negatives. What was good about it? What was what could have gone better? And finally, a future focus stage. So if we did it again, what would you do the same and what would you do differently? And this is a really key part of reflection to make sure that you are you're not just thinking of you're not just describing these. These things all build on each other. So your descriptive stage describes what's happened. Your critical thinking stage builds on that um, by asking those critical questions about it. And your future focus stage builds on that again to take it through to the next step. What would you do the same next time? What would you do differently next time? What are we learning from it? Now, you might be there thinking that um, you're unlikely to ever have to do this activity again. You might be thinking there, you wish you never are asked to do that activity again. You might be thinking, I wish I could do it again. Um, but you might be thinking it's unlikely. Um, however, think about if you are in a seminar um, as part of your studies or a tutorial or a lecture or any kind of group activity, and you're asked as a group to write down your ideas on a particular topic. Um, I suspect many of us have been there. You've got a white uh, a sheet that's a big A2 sheet that's been pulled from a flip chart. You've got your flip chart pens. Um, you've all been given a pen or sometimes, sometimes actually often only there's only one or two pens which make things more complicated. And as a group, you are asked to write down ideas on that sheet of paper. Some of these things that you just talked about might well apply to that. So agreeing who is going to do the writing dividing up different tasks, um, talking about what you do before you launch in and do it. Imagine if you had that flip chart paper, you did all have a pen and you suddenly all launched in and started writing down your ideas in that bit of paper. Even basic things as agreeing what was the top of the paper and what was the bottom of the paper um, can be really useful in that kind of activity. So we rarely do the same activity twice. We rarely do exactly the same thing twice. You know, you, what, there's all kinds of phrases about it. You don't cross the same river twice, do you? Um, but being able to pick out some key learning points from one activity, from one event that's happened, and apply them to similar situations or even very different situations, but being able to pick out those key learning points and apply them to future situations is an incredible skill to have. And that's what reflection is about. That is what reflection will help you do, um, to learn from your experiences and to apply that to what happens in the future. And if you can get to grips with that, then you will be, um, it will enhance your studies, it will enhance your career, like I say, in the skills team, we are always reflecting on things and we're always asking each other for feedback, reflecting on what we've done. This workshop, this is, uh, I think, the third time I've run this workshop. This is its third iteration. It's been slightly different each time um, because I've reflected on it and I've made changes based on how it's gone. So a really, really valuable skill. Um, and um, also it can be as simple and as or as complex as you'd like. So we've done that simple reflection. Hopefully it wasn't too much hard work. And um, we just asked ourselves some key questions that followed these three stages of reflection. So to look at these stages in more detail, the descriptive stage. 
So here you describe the event. So it can be basic, it can be more complex. You can go into more or less detail depending on, um, on the event, on, on how complex the event itself is. But the more detail you describe it in, the more you can think about it from different angles. So I've put some example questions up here. Um, what happened? Who else was involved? Where was it? When did I do it? How did I do it? How did I feel? And you can see these questions go along these um, classic questions that um, we talk about a lot in skills and that you probably heard elsewhere as well. What, where, who, when, how? So thinking about all these different aspects can really help you bring a much richer detail to your description. So we tend, um, the temptation is to stick at what. This is what happened. But think about these other things. Where where was it? Where where did you do it? Where was it um, you know, that you were located? Who else was there? When did you do it? How did you do it? And how did you feel? We'll all bring that extra um, detail to your description. I've got some questions here. On the next slide here, I've got some sentence starters. So some people might find sentence starters more helpful than questions. So I traveled to... That's a where question, um, but just in a sentence starter, I worked with, covers your who. My deadline was, there's some time, some when. My task was to, my main emotion was. Um, so experiment, find what um, works for you best, whether that's questions, whether that's sentence starters, um, to get that, that detail and that richness to your description. Next, we have the critical thinking stage. So again, We've got these who, what, where, when questions, but also why comes in when we're talking about our critical thinking stage. So it's that extra step um, further on. So why did I do it that way? What went well? Who did I enjoy working with? What could have gone better? And when did I work best? These are all questions that take you a step beyond that initial description. So you need the description there to start off with. You've got that foundation of your description. Um, apart from anything else, that will allow you to remember the event if you're going back and using this reflection later. Good to get all the details down so you don't forget it. But also that description has laid that foundation to then add these questions onto in your critical thinking um, and really start taking that next step beyond um, when you're doing your reflection. And again, we've got sentence starters. So this has taught me, I am pleased with, I regret, I assumed, that's a really interesting question. What assumptions did you make whilst this event happened? Um, really, really fascinating to go down that, um, that route. This may have been because, another good sentence starter for critical thinking. I've got an example in a minute that will show you how this works in practice. Um, so that's coming up, just so you know. And then we've got our future focus stage. So here we're thinking about what would happen next time? What will I do the same next time? What will I do differently? When will I do it again? Where will I go next time? Who will I ask for advice? Again, you can see those same questions, who, what, where, when, um, coming through. But again, this time looking at the future. So we're pulling together what we're going to learn from the um, event that happened and how that's going to impact on what's what we're going to do in the future so again you can see this builds on the other stages we've got our foundation of our description that rich detail we've got in there we've done our critical thinking which um pulls further um thoughts and analysis out of that and now we're going to take that description that critical thinking and pull it into a plan for the future um, and real real learning points and that's where the impact of the, ref the reflection comes in in our future focus stage Sentence starters here. Um, so you might want to write these in, in full sentences. In future, I will. It would be interesting too. I hope that. Um, or you might want to just do this as an action plan, bullet points. So my action plan is, and then put your bullet points in there. Whatever works best for you. So remember at the moment, we're talking about a personal reflection. You don't need to worry about format, style. It doesn't need to be full sentences if you don't want it to. Whatever works for you. Um, and that's those three stage. So I said I'd show you an example of this kind of reflection and hopefully you can see this. Uh, let's make it full screen and let's play this. I visited Cork Abbey at the weekend. I booked the tickets at 4am in order to make sure I got the time I wanted. We travelled in my car so I drove. I really enjoyed myself whilst we were there 
but I was tired on the way home. I regret taking my car because I was tired afterwards. However, I am pleased that I got the tickets I wanted, so it was worth booking them at 4 a.m. Having the tickets at the time I wanted meant that I could organize the rest of the day around it in the way that I wanted to. Next time, I will book the tickets as early as possible again so that I can get the ones I want. However, we will travel in someone else's car so that I am not the one driving. I hope that this will make the whole experience more enjoyable for me. So that was an example of a reflection. I'm going to pull my slides back up because I've got those slides again and we'll just talk through that in a bit more detail. So here is the first part of that reflection we've just heard. And this is the descriptive stage that we talked about. It's a description of what happened. Um, as you can see, it's not doing that further thinking at this point, it's literally describing what the reflector um, did. So only four sentences. So again, I want to make this point that reflection doesn't have to be complex, doesn't have to be overly complicated. It just needs to cover these key points. So only four sentences, but within that, the reflector has considered what they did, when they did it, how they did it, and how they felt. So we've covered some really key points there. We've covered lots of that. Um, we've got, so we've got what, we've got where, we've got how in there, um, we've got when. All those elements are here, um, but in a quite a short paragraph. So we don't need to go over the top of this if we don't want to. Now, it talks about Cork Abbey. Um, you may or may know not, you may or may not know what Cork Abbey is. For those of you who are local to Derby, you might well do, or Derbyshire. Um, for those of you who are not, you might be um, from somewhere else or, or studying online or an international student, you might not know what Cork Abbey is. This is a personal reflection, so we don't need to worry about going into lots and lots of detail about things that, that we know already. So the reflector knows what Cork Abbey is. Um, because this is for their eyes only, they don't need to go into that. They don't need to spend that time describing something they know already. If, however, you're going to pull this into an academic assignment, um, you will need to make sure that you're explaining things um, that might not be immediately apparent to whoever's reading your work. So just bear that in mind. Don't worry about it at all if it's just for you. But if someone else is going to be reading it, then you need to think about that extra detail as well. Um, so the next part of that reflection here, we've got that critical thinking stage. Um, so you can see some of those sentence starters coming through that we talked about earlier. I regret. Um, I am pleased that all the, the just these extra um, thoughts about it. So we've got some emotions there um, we've got an analysis of what was good, what was bad. Again, it's not long, um, but we've covered a lot there. Um, You've got how the reflector felt, um, they were tired, there's regret there about why they were tired, um, but they're pleased because they, the, the tickets were right, and um, so it was worth getting a warrior. And so you can see that that foundation of the description is then built on with our critical um, analysis. We're adding value to the description by thinking critically about it. And then finally, we've got the future focus stage. This is our action plan. What I'm going to do next time. Next time, I will book the tickets as early as possible again. We've got a real concrete plan. Um, and then the second plan, part of the plan, we will travel in someone else's car so that I am not driving. Um, we've got two really um, concrete action points there. We know what we're going to do. We know why we're going to do it because we've thought about it critically and there's no ambiguity. We, we've, got a, we've got a firm action point plan here um, and the hope that this will make it more enjoyable for me. Um, another point about this being a personal reflection. I've not considered in this personal reflection or the reflector hasn't considered in this personal reflection um, about anybody else. Uh, the reflector hasn't considered about who is going to drive the car and whether it makes the experience more enjoyable for them. Again, it's the personal reflection. So you don't necessarily need to be worrying about what other people think, or you don't at all need to be worrying about what other people might think about a personal reflection. Obviously, if you're going to write something that you really don't want anyone else to see, um, make sure that you do it in a secure manner. Um, but you don't need to be worrying about what other people might think of what you are writing. A personal reflection is a really freeing thing to just be able to reflect 
from your own personal point of view without thinking about what if someone reads this what will so and so think if they if they see that i've thought this and the the more that you can let go of all those worries and actually tap into how you're really feeling the more you will get out of your reflection like I say, and we'll talk about academic um, reflection in a second, uh, you might want to modify some of that if you're pulling it into an academic assignment. But I'm going to repeat the point I made earlier. If you're struggling with reflecting for an academic assignment, it can be really valuable to put that to one side at first and do a purely personal reflection that no one else is going to look at, that you can then pull out those key elements. So if I was going to pull out things from this for an academic assignment, I probably wouldn't include um, that, that, that selfish bit where I'm just hoping it's going to make it more enjoyable for me. And I might put in something there about how I would hope that it would make the whole experience more enjoyable for everyone. <laughs> that's a really simplistic way of doing it, but that's the kind of thing you can do. Um, if you are, if you're pulling your reflection into something that someone else is going to read. That was Naomi exploring the three stages of reflection. See the description for more reflection resources. Thanks for watching.